Hey, everybody, and welcome back again to the One Flesh podcast. I am your host today, Brittany Hartikainen. Rickard is not with us today because I have a very special guest with me who I'm so excited to announce. I have one of my best friends in the entire world and someone that I look up to with all of my heart. Her name is Mariana Parhatiuk, and I'm so excited to have her on our podcast today. So Mariana, I'm going to switch it over to you and I just want you to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. We've got a lot of subscribers and folks that you may be watching this for the first time. You don't even know who any of us are. Um, If you could just tell us who you are, what you do, um, and we'll start from there. Well, first off, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, My name is Mariana Parhatiuk, and I am one of the Hungry Gen uh, pastors, and I've been at Hungry Gen for over 20 years now. We are currently, my husband and I, are launching a campus up in Everett uh, in the Northwest area, so we're really excited about that. So that's kind of our new endeavor that's been happening in this season. Uh, Also, just a little bit about me, I have three beautiful girls, and I've been married this year in August for 17 years with Elia. Some of you may know him or have heard of him. Uh, He has his own YouTube channel. Um, It's very prophetic-led, also with deliverance as well, so you got to check it out. And just recently, I'm going to be launching my very first book, uh, Reclaiming Your Marriage. Um, It's a book, a lot of it has to do with just lessons that I've learned through our own personal marriage. Mm -hmm. And I launched a YouTube also uh, last year called Insights with Mariana. And it covers about woman ministry, the prophetic, motherhood, just like the everyday living, things about relationships a lot, about marriage, also relationships um, in regard to family, friends, just the everyday type of things. And so uh, just to summarize, um, just those kind of small nuggets of wisdom along the way that I've learned that I want to share uh, with people. So that's kind of my current life right now. So yeah, yeah, a lot of things going on. Yeah, it's so cool that you are writing a book. And I know, I mean, I've known Mariana for a long time, over 20 years, technically. Yes, yes. And so um, it's really cool to have a friend who's writing a book and something that's going to be so transformational. So definitely so excited for when that comes out. I'll definitely be the first person to purchase your book (laughs) because, you know, we do, we're having our marriage podcast, not because we ourselves feel like, you know, me and Ricard, we're not experts by any means. I mean, we've, we're barely coming up on six years ourselves, but our goal is to bring on people like yourself who have been married for a long time who and the cool part is is that like you guys are in our our age group you know so that you guys have three times the history in marriage than we do is pretty exciting and so (laughs) (laughs) i just feel really honored that you would join us on our podcast to share the wisdom you mentioned that you have small nuggets but i would actually venture to say that you have really large golden (laughs) nuggets of wisdom (laughs) To share with people who are going to be watching this podcast. And so we've already gotten some feedback from folks who have been watching that um, they've been really inspired or by some of the content. And so I feel I feel really confident you guys are going to really enjoy this podcast today. So, um, Mariana, can you tell us what inspired you? You know, you mentioned that you're you're writing a book and actually I think you're pretty much almost done just yes. in some of those closing phases now. What inspired you to write a book and what what made you decide to focus on marriage as your content? It's a really good question. So, well, you know, you probably have heard it. It's been said all the time that, you know, the first most important decision of your life is giving your life to Christ. And the second one is who you marry and uh, who you marry. It changes the trajectory of your life um, in the good or the bad, like it or not. That's just the real deal. So who you marry can and how you live your life with the person that you've married impacts every area you you can't hide it in your house Mm -hmm. you know it it falls and it overflows into your career into your ministry into your business into other relationships into 
certain other areas of your life and you can't avoid it. And I think that what inspired me because I got married really young, as you know, Mm -hmm. I got married when I was 19 years old and there were things, of course, there were books out there. There were things that I did already know we read about, we heard about, but there were things that we struggled internally between each other and in our marriage that I wish I knew Mm -hmm. at that time that could have really helped me to go through things quicker but by through the grace of god we've gone through those things and we were able to receive the certain wisdom and revelation through people through the things um, that holy spirit guided us through and i wanted to take that what i learned and to share it with others i felt really led by the lord to do that yeah. But also I find that people struggle in the secret so much. There's so shame. There's so much shame when they are feeling like there's conflict in marriage, misunderstandings, and a lot in my book, in the book, Reclaiming Your Marriage, that's the title, I, I emphasize a lot about loneliness, uh, loneliness in marriage. And I think that part is very shameful for anyone to acknowledge an individual, a spouse to be like, I'm lonely in marriage. How ironic is that? You marry for a friendship, mm-hmm. to for a companion, to be with someone, to share life with, and you get married to feel alone. How yeah. How is that possible? Right. And is that common or are you alone being alone? Mm. And in my marriage in the beginning stage, I thought, I was just this one person, this one outlier that was struggling and nobody else was. Everyone had these good marriages. At least that's just what it seemed because no one was really talking about it, at least not in the time that I was married, which was in the early stage 17 years ago. So I realized like, how do I process loneliness? How do I understand why I'm feeling this way? How much of it is my spouse's fault? Mm -hmm. How much of it is my own personal wounds? And knowing how to navigate through that. And Holy Spirit really helped me through this whole process of understanding what's my responsibility, how I got out of it, how I embraced being alone at times to be alone with Him in the intimacy with him. And it brought so much healing, so much wholeness, which came out to wholeness in my marriage. So that being said, it's just, but at that time it was very shameful. Yeah. At that time I felt embarrassed that I was struggling being alone in my marriage. Something was wrong with me, Right. but it wasn't the case. So I wrote a book about it, things that Holy Spirit helped me, tools that he gave me on how to get out of that feeling and honestly feeling dismayed in my marriage and really bringing that breakthrough um, into our marriage and where we are now. So that that's where it inspired me. I don't want people that are facing problems right now and they're too ashamed to ask for help, especially if they're pastors or leaders or people that have even actually been married for quite some time and they're struggling with loneliness in marriage. How do you navigate that? So with the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm just about done writing the book and about to release it this year. And I really have been prayerful that it will bless many marriages so that they don't feel alone being alone. (laughs) Come on. So can you elaborate for us just a little bit? Because I am certain that as some folks are hearing that loneliness and marriage, there's something about that word that people really resonate with and they might be waiting to hear like, what does she mean by that? And is that me? And so can you elaborate a little bit on, on what you mean by feeling alone in marriage and, and kind of describe that feeling and maybe share just a little golden, I was going to say golden crystal, but golden (laughs) nugget um, about one thing that you did to help you overcome. Yeah. You know, You can feel alone in a relationship or in marriage in many different ways. One of them being like neglect, right? Being chosen over. That's one uh, big emphasis that I put in the book was being chosen over where it could be the, the spouse is choosing 
friends over the spouse, ministry, business, dreams and visions, mm. choosing self, choosing wow. even certain substance abuse over the wife wow. or the husband, your spouse. So that's a form of neglect because yeah. neglect is knowing that you're supposed to give attention to something, but you are choosing not to give it attention. And the feeling of knowing that you have a partner, you have a friend to do life with, but they're choosing to do it on their own with their own priorities. And the feeling of being chosen over is something that even in ministry, something that my husband and I are actually would have to deal a lot with marriages and couples because they feel neglected. They feel abandoned by their own spouse where they don't feel seen. They don't feel mm -hmm. heard. They don't, they're not there emotionally. And it could be, it could be in so many different forms in marriage, but it happens all the time. And the big emphasis that I can focus in on right now is being chosen over where the spouse wow. intentionally chooses ministry or golfing with the boys, or, you know, it could be business or their internal dreams, or honestly, even providing for the family because it's such a need in them. It's such an identity crisis within them that they have to do it, that they come to a place of neglecting their spouse, their family, their home life. And this is where it happens a lot. And how do I navigate that as yeah. a spouse when that's happening? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, I bring up the example uh, within Proverbs. There's three types of women that in Proverbs it describes. One is the quarreling wife. The second one is the promiscuous wife. And the third one is the Proverbs 31 wife. See, all three of them faced loneliness. The oh. quarreling wife, she faced loneliness and the way she handled it was through her ver words, verbally, oh. complaining, quarreling, constantly trying to talk and tell them, this is how I'm feeling. Why can't you understand this? Mm. Why, oh, why can't you hand, <laughs> like, why, hello, can you please like pay attention? Uh, this is how I'm feeling, but they're not for whatever reason getting it, yeah. right? It's if anything you're doing with your complaining is annoying them and actually causing them to feel even more repulsed and yeah. you're pushing them away. And you're like, I'm trying to communicate here, right. but it's doing the opposite effect where it's drawing you away from the person. The second one is the promiscuous wife. You know, a lot of times for a very long time, I didn't see this message because Proverbs 8, Proverbs 9 would talk about this promiscuous woman. But when I read it a couple of times, like in a little bit of a deeper way, I realized that she was a wife because she would say, my husband is away with business oh, and come, wow. come to my home. And I was like, this promiscuous woman, this wayward woman is a wife. Wow. So this promiscuous woman now the second way that people handle loneliness is through their action, meaning that they will replace their spouse with something else. I'm not saying for all women. Some people do this. Mm -hmm. They do replace them with another person having an affair, emotional affair. Those things are all there and true. Right. But sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes they will replace their spouse with another idol because us as human beings, we cannot live with a void. We yeah. have to fill it somehow. Wow, it's so true. So through this promiscuous wife, she was filling it with another man, but it could be in a different correlation for a woman it could be shopping it yeah. could be a uh, business or being a boss babe it could be her children mm. it could be her being a mom filling it somewhere else versus you know taking the spot of the spouse their yeah. their actions are causing them to be wayward wayward is another way of saying that she doesn't think what she's doing she doesn't, she doesn't put thoughts to her steps. And so she's just trying to fill the void. She's doing it with such desperation that she does it with foolishness. That's the second one. The third one is Proverbs 31. She is alone. A lot of times people miss this because 
they think, oh, she's just doing so much and she is celebrated mm -hmm. and she is loved and her husband trusts her with his heart. So you're thinking that he's always there. But if you read it deeper, she's constantly doing things alone. Yeah. And you can see that he was really important, right? Because he had things to do and he was held in, in high um, regard. Uh, I forget the scripture on the top of my head, but you know that he holds high status and she's alone. But all three of these women are alone in certain forms, but handle it in all different ways. And I think all of us can attest that we've all handled it in those ways. But the goal is not for the Proverbs 31 for us to be so busy that we don't even notice our husband is gone or our spouse is gone, but for us to have this relationship with the Lord to such a degree that we are that within us is a noble character. You can't get a noble character by being busy. You get a noble character by being with someone who is noble, yeah, who so is good. whole, who has the fruits of the spirit so that you can abide in him and he can teach you how to carry that godly character. So she didn't do it by being busy. She did it because she abided in something that was more than her. Yeah. So, and that gave her purpose. Yes. And Come on, that's so good. So, there's the three ways that you handle loneliness and I could I could attest I've handled them all three different ways, <laughs> you know. I was that quarreling wife. I was that trying to fill myself with a different void when he wasn't filling that need for me. And the third one is where it's like, okay, this didn't work, that didn't work. I guess the unfortunate part is sometimes we try everything else except Jesus. Right. You know, except <laughs> going to him first yeah. and which is he is truly the the answer to our loneliness. And when you are alone, you have an advantage mm. that when he or she, your spouse, is physically absent, they're super busy, they're in high demand, right? And they are choosing those things outside of you. You want to complain about it. You want to tell them like it is like, hey, don't forget about me. How dare you? You know, acknowledge mm -hmm. me. I'm here. I'm not just, I'm not going to take your leftovers. I mean, we can quarrel and we can say some really fancy words with our quarreling, you know, yeah. and, or we can act in the sense like, fine, you want to do that? I'll fill myself some other way. You know, yeah. you want to keep being gone? I'll, I'll find another way. And all of these things are short-lived. They're all ways of being filled at the moment, but they they can never fix or heal that that void of loneliness because it's deeper. Yeah. And the only way to fill that is getting deeper with the Holy Spirit, taking advantage of that loneliness and getting alone with Him. That's so good. And that's how you not only get, receive wholeness, but it also brings this awareness that your spouse is not the person to bring healing to you oh or to bring you to a place where he's the savior. And I'll say this, um, is that many women and just marriages that are very brand new, newlyweds, we idolize our spouses. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize how much we make them and cause them to be our savior. We admire them so much. That's what an idol is with admiration. We worship them. We glorify them. We adore them, right? And the way they become an idol is when they take the place of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we don't even want to say it that way, but that's true. Yeah. So in the newlywed stage or even in the stages of now, however long you're in, been married, six months, six years, 16 years, it doesn't matter. We can all put our spouse in that position. Yeah. And the only way to get them out of that position is when Jesus Christ fills that void, yeah. him first, going to that secret place, abiding in him, him giving you that not only the wholeness inside of your soul and filling you up, but he's really helping you navigate to know that your spouse is not the healer, not the savior. They are the helpers to get you to the healer, to get to the savior. They are not it. Cool. They are the ones to guide it to the savior. That's how it should be. Yeah. So 
That's so good. That's just a little bit about the loneliness. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. Man, that, that already like whets my appetite for more to <laughs> to see like what other things are coming in your book. That's so good. I feel like just that information that you shared alone, like if, if we were to stop there, this would be like such a beneficial episode, especially for women who are listening and um I mean, I know even what you're saying, is it's really blessing me right now as I'm hearing you. Lot. And so the when you talk about finding yourself, your purpose in Christ and using that opportunity mm-hmm. of whatever loneliness you may feel, it, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of times, especially in the beginning of marriage and those first several formative years that we may experience that loneliness, um, what are some practical things that as a woman or maybe as a spouse, like whether you're a man or a woman, is there something practical that we can do to make sure that we are approaching that loneliness like the Proverbs 31 woman, you know, that we are getting closer with God? Because, you know, I think oftentimes Like we can know what to do. Like we know what we need to do, but how to do it, how to get there sometimes can be the challenge. It's like, like when someone tells you that you need to lose weight and you're like, yeah, I know I need to lose weight, but like how, (laughs) you know? So what are some things that someone can do practically to, to go deeper with God and really fight that loneliness? I would say one thing, um, you know, as spouses, we complain and we're so authentic, we're so honest, we're so vulnerable in that stage of quarreling Mm -hmm. to our spouse. I say, take that quarreling and not necessarily um, quarrel with the Lord. I mean, you can, but what I'm saying is be real with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't put a facade where it's like, okay, Jesus, please help me. Amen. I'm talking about where it says in Philippians chapter four, in one of the translation, it says, tell me everything. Come on. Everything. And so I do. And so I did. I I genuinely would tell the Lord everything that would bother me yeah. about what my husband was doing at the time. I, I didn't hold anything back. Yeah. I didn't have a filter with the Lord. I didn't put God in a box where I was like, okay, I have to speak this type of way, this type of tone. I, because The thing is, is that we have to understand that God knows our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We all know this. We say this, but we don't behave this way. We are like, oh, I'm not going to say it. But there's such power when you release saying, you know, Lord, I'm really frustrated with my husband. I'm really frustrated with my spouse. They're doing A, B, and C. I just want to wring his neck. Right. I'm just kidding. No, I mean, <laughs> well, but, you know, no, but, but, but genuinely <laughs> I've had, I've had those yeah. real talks with the Lord. And so one of the basic things is have a real talk with God. Yeah. Have a real genuine saying, Lord, this is frustrating to me and I need help here. <laughs> and, and it says in John chapter 14 is that Holy Spirit is our helper. Yeah. How do you think that he's going to help you? He's going to help in the way that you really need it. Yeah. He's going to give you the guidance, the wisdom, the books, the podcast, the people, the the nuggets to look at yourself and say, you know, this is the problem, you know, pointing back to you sometimes versus yeah. it only being your spouse, not to get them away from their responsibility. That is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that one of the practical ways is being real with the Lord and telling him everything, yeah. telling him all of the problems and all of the frustrations, all of the hurts and wounds that you're experiencing. When you do that, he has this beautiful way of showing you that there's a wound there. There's a way uh, that he wants to help you hear. He's going, I don't, I can't tell you how many times the Lord would guide me to the right book, mm. to the right YouTube message, to the right person that would I'll be in conversation with. Yeah. They would say something that was not only reassuring, but confirmation where I felt already I was supposed to do or how I was supposed to do it. He has his ways of helping you and knowing how to reach you. Yeah. So one of the practical ways of solving that is by having a real talk with the Lord. Don't have a filter. Tell him everything yeah. how you feel. Don't hold back. When you do that, you release not only your frustration, 
not only are you releasing like that that quarreling the frustration to him but you you're releasing the problem to the feet of jesus mm, come on, so good. and you feel that burden off of you yeah here's the difference you know, you can complain and sometimes spouses do this. They complain to their friends about it. They feel mm -hmm. good for five minutes, but that same feeling come leaves as soon as they leave that place. Yeah. They complain about their spouse. They complain about their marriage, what's going on. And for a moment, they feel heard. They feel like, oh, that frustration left. But as soon as they leave that place and they leave the presence of their friend, it all comes back in yeah. and they almost feel more guilty that they're like, I should have not shared that. Yeah. I sh they actually carry you. Threw my husband under the bus. Yeah, exactly. Th First off, don't do that. Don't, yeah. you don't need to talk to your friends about your spouse. Like that's another practical step. Mm -hmm. Stop talking to the wrong people about your marriage. It shouldn't should not leave your mouth about your marriage to anybody outside of Holy Spirit and a safe, safe advisor. I'm talking about like a mentor, yeah. someone who is invested into your growth, yeah, not invested into hearing gossip. So true. So that's, that's another practical thing is like, who are you talking to about this? Yeah. They're not solving anything. They're just going to pat you on the back and say, hey, I'm sorry you feel so bad about this. Just get divorced. A lot of times statistics say that you, <laughs> those that talk about it more are led to divorce versus staying, you know, mm -hmm. because they're like, they're going to give you bad advice. So be careful who you talk to. Talk to the Lord. Pour your heart onto Him. And make sure you have, like I was talking about that loneliness, alone time. Alone versus lonely. You know, I think one of the most things that grieve Holy Spirit is when you say you're alone when you truly are not alone. Yeah. You're never alone. You know, those that are believers, those that have Jesus Christ uh, as their Lord, per their personal Lord and Savior, you truly are not alone. Come on. And I, I find that that grieves Holy Spirit when you say, I'm so alone. The fact is, is that we're choosing not to spend time with Him. And we're choosing to have everything else and anyone else except him. Mm -hmm. So I say the second practical step is really honoring and treasuring your time with Holy Spirit. Yeah. Bringing that awareness. And you can't be aware of Holy Spirit if you're not abiding in him and giving him time. Yeah. And so some people are like, well, I'm a mom of, you know, two kids or a newborn and I'm not having sleep, I can't wake up early. That's okay. You can abide with him and talk to him while you're washing dishes mm -hmm. or even when you're feeding your baby or when you're changing the diaper or when you're going on commute to your job. You can five find- Five minutes alone in the shower. <laughs> or five minutes alone in the shower, you know? Finding the, fa it's not about um, having this one hour like you did when you were single and yeah. now your seasons have changed. You have to understand that you can find these pockets of time to talk, but it's the abiding. That means it's not just an hour, it's abiding throughout the day. Yeah, And abiding throughout the day brings awareness of Him. And when you bring awareness of Him into your life, it removes the loneliness because you are aware he's with you. You're not alone. Yeah. And so good. So it's a formula. It's a step by step, but you have to be intentional about giving your time and honoring the fact that Holy Spirit is there at the, any moment you give him. So that's so good. That's so good. Even <clears throat> especially when you're talking about kind of like the difference between being lonely and being alone like you're you may feel lonely but you're not alone no it reminds me of this prophetic word that i received when i was 17 and that prophet came to our church a long time ago and i remember he had said um you are lonely you are lonely he's like you can be in a crowd full of people but mm. but you feel the loneliness and the interesting thing though was he said that it's not a bad thing and that god actually intended you to feel that because in that loneliness that's what is drawing you to god that's, so that's why you go to god and as he was mentioning like that's why you have been going to god in the seeker place that's so you good. know and so it's interesting to hear you say that too about like that 
we have the Holy Spirit. We are not alone. And no. and to say that we are alone as a child of God is actually, it is a uh, almost like a, a diss against the Holy it Spirit is. because He is with us. He's omnipresent. Yes, He is Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. you know. So, and the loneliness sometimes. I would venture to say like in many times it's not actually a bad thing. Loneliness is a feeling and emotions are meant to be felt and emotions are, are, uh, they are signs Yes, to point us to what we need to do. Yes. That's so, so that's good. Yes. Like even like what you described, just that loneliness, it should draw you to the, the foot of the cross. It should draw you yes, to amen. Jesus, your friend. I love that. What you said, I think that more of us need to hear that more often because it can be so easy yes. to forget, you know, especially when you're in your day to day life. Yeah. You know, and you, I especially love what you said about how it, things may not be the way they used to be when you were single. So true. You know, you no. and then you start having kids. Yeah. And like your career starts picking up and, yep. you know, then suddenly you have literally no time, you know, and I know that I'm like, right now I'm juggling like a million things. And, you know, so it's about being intentional and finding that time with God wherever you are. And, and I don't know about you, but I have found that actually it's always in the most unorthodox place that yeah. like I experience god the most like just the other day i was literally in the pantry oh, and i just like was <laughs> totally smacked by the holy spirit bawling in tears like walking to the sink that's so good. you know so like that's so that's just how no, god it, does it these days <laughs> no it's so true i've had so many moments where i've had such i knew it was the holy spirit speaking to me in the kitchen yeah of all places. It's a holy place. It's a holy place. Yeah. It is. I mean, I make some good dishes, but yeah. I'm telling you, it's like where he meets me. I don't know. Some Talk about the bread of life, you know, <laughs> right there in the kitchen, in that pantry. <laughs> the Lord is so intentional, yes. isn't he? <laughs> he totally is. <laughs> in the car, wherever it is. But I, I, going back to the fact of being aware of the fact that he's always with you is the key to removing that loneliness mm -hmm. and honestly coming to a place of repentance and saying, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry that I grieved you or didn't find you yeah. necessarily as important to to give you my attention. Yeah. Even though I have three kids and yes, we all come from different seasons and stages, but he is the most important. Yeah, He is the outmost important to me because if I don't have my time in my morning, just the moment of, solitude a moment of hearing him him hearing me receiving all of that just pouring out reading the word if i don't have that i have so many demands pulling at my left and right that i don't know if i'm going to give my best to my children to my spouse to ministry to other people to yeah. other demands we all know this yeah we all know this it's time that we stop knowing it and we start doing it Oof. so it's 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 enough of the head knowledge it's a time yeah. for revelation Come on, and so, so good. i think that what needs to happen is not only repenting to holy spirit saying holy spirit i'm sorry that i didn't uh give you the place of the most importance in my life in the most importance in my marriage in the most importance of my season but i would even ask you to pray this prayer and invite spirit of revelation to mm -hmm. come because it's one thing you hearing this and just saying oh that's good oh that was a nice encouragement and then going back to the ways that you are living and it's not going to solve anything yeah. but when spirit of revelation comes where it says in ephesians where it says this may the spirit of wisdom and revelation fall upon you mm, yeah i pray that over and over and over lord let the spirit of wisdom and revelation fall upon me oh, because God. then that's when it goes from head knowledge to me living it breathing it speaking it and being it so yeah. that's that's what i would even just those practical things is coming to a place of having that authentic talk with the holy spirit with the lord and and just apologizing and repenting that will lead you to a place of revelation yeah that brings me to actually really a uh, really big question that i wanted to ask you it's a perfect time to ask it is how do you invite the Holy Spirit into your marriage? How do you bring God into your marriage? You know, like we all make those vows, right? Especially if you're a Christian, you're a believer, you and your husband, 
<clears throat> before you get married and you make that covenant before God and you talk about like the threefold cord, you know, um, sorry, yeah, the threefold cord. And, you know, we make that promise and to keep God in the center. But I do think that it's so easy to get caught up in the two of you and not the three of you. Yeah. You know, and so how can we bring the Holy Spirit daily like into our marriages and be like you mentioned before being more aware of god in our personal lives but even together you know so and good. seeing yourself as three instead of one mm -hmm. or two mm -hmm. you know because i know we may touch on this a little bit later but you already mentioned it how it's so easy to think of self yeah me 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 yeah. in the marriage whereas there's two 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 we 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 but actually right. we is three 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 <laughs> you know so right how do you do that Gosh, that's that's a really good question. But, you know, I live off of this verse, Proverbs 3, 5. It says, do not lean on your own understanding, but trust the Lord with all of your heart. Yeah. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So good. The acknowledging. Now, I'm saying this in the way where we make decisions every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we have opinions every day with our spouse we're making decisions together you know with life where we're going to live what we're going to do how we're going to spend our money how we're going to raise our kids what we're going to do in ministry what's our vision what's our purpose all of that is a way of decisions right we're making decisions all the time one of the things first is you got to be it in order to bring it into marriage right because a lot of times we can do this religiously where it's like, oh, let's just pray right now. And it just means nothing. And yeah. it can just honestly annoy your spouse. Or again, it depends where you're at with your relationship with the Lord and your marriage. If you guys have none of that foundation, then this is where you're going to have to bring inspiration, you know, mm. and start inspiring your spouse. Maybe some of you already have like you guys pray together, read the word together. Again, everyone may be at different levels with mm -hmm. that understanding, but the First and foremost, what I would encourage is a lot of times when women want change, we m use manipulation as a tool versus inspiration. You know, manipulation is so easy. It's like you, because you want it your way. So you'll find a way to yeah. get your way and you'll use emotions, words, or any type of action to manipulate your spouse or that situation to come out for your outcome the way you want it. Yeah, it's so good. And you want to inspire, not manipulate. Because again, no one likes to be controlled. No one likes to be manipulated. It's a form of witchcraft. We know this. Mm -hmm. But how do we inspire versus manipulate? You want change now and you want things to move this way because manipulation is quick. You know, just like magic, right? Magic is like what we know in Disney and things mm -hmm. like that. It's with a quick little wand, quick little spell. It's a quick yeah. Inspiration is usually a process yeah. and manipulation is a now. There's no patience. There's no process to it. It's a mm. now thing. It's a flesh thing. It's a wicked thing. Mm. Inspiration oh, girl. In inspiration <laughs> is where you're allowing the Lord to work and he's and you're giving him permission to do the change, not you. Inspiration showing that you're like going to be patient you're going to allow holy spirit to do the work when you acknowledge him and it says he will direct your paths that means that he will help you know to go left or to go right yeah. he will let you know what to say what not to say i'm going to just be very open here and this is one of the things and some people may think like that's too much or what i don't care i ask holy spirit to help me with everything mm -hmm. And I say that not in the sense of like choosing my wallpaper or choosing like, oh, what kind of toilet paper I should choose brand. No, yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Holy Spirit is my dearest friend. And Holy Spirit knows my husband better than I could even know. Yeah. Holy Spirit knows your spouse better than you could even know. So I ask and I acknowledge him how to how to talk to him, how to please him, how to speak to him, how to oh, bring yeah. up the situation that bothered me. How do I bring up my insecurity and he made me feel unsafe? How mm. did I, how do I bring these things up instead of bringing it up with my pain and my wound where I can go to a place of attack? Cause we all can, let's just be real. So 
the way I bring Holy Spirit in is I acknowledge him and I invite him, help me. How do I say this? How do I do this? How do I do that? And sometimes it's like a, when you pray this and you invite Holy Spirit, you take a pause on your emotions mm. and and it goes down a bit. Instead of reaction, mm. yeah. you're responding and and you allow it to sit with you. You allow Holy Spirit to deal with your insecurity, your trigger, your pain, your um, offense that came from yeah. your spouse, all of it, whatever it is, or you feel unheard, you feel unseen, all of your problems. And you bring it to him and you acknowledge him before you speak, before you talk, before you react. Before that, he will direct you. Mm. It's it's a truth for everything in life. And it's the same thing for your marriage. So before I bring up something, instead of me reacting, because I've done this, this is why I'm a, tes- uh, I'm a testimony to this. I, I've seen two ways where if I don't acknowledge Holy Spirit, if I don't talk to him, talk to him or pour it out to him i'm frustrated i'm hurt i feel unsafe i feel insecure i feel all these things i tell him it all but when i do not i instantly react i do it with a bad tone i do it with an attitude i do it out of fear and he goes defensive my spouse Mm -hmm. because wouldn't you right right attack mode uh, attack mode right and all of the things I'm doing wrong, I'm doing it out of my wounds, my triggers. And his response is, well, what's going on? But when I don't react, I just ask, Holy Spirit, I'm acknowledging you right now. Please help me. How do I navigate this? I sit with it maybe a day, a couple of hours. Once I calm down, like mm-hmm. literally that is a tool of mine where I allow Holy Spirit to calm me down to process it. And when I'm in a good place emotionally where I'm not comp- compromised, right? I acknowledged him and I speak in a way from things I've heard in conferences, podcast books, and I apply those things like, yeah. okay, say it this way, you know, don't say always or never. I start applying these truths and these wisdoms come. Yep. And his response is doesn't hurt me. He's like, yeah. okay. Well, I'm sorry, A, B, and C. We'll do this next time. Or, okay, I will help you this way next time. I won't do that again, or et cetera, et cetera, whatever it is. Yeah. But Proverbs 3 5 has been my one of my uh, verses for life is yeah. I acknowledge him and he will direct me. Yeah. So when I bring him in, and the simplest way, no matter what level you're at, if you're reading the Bible together or you haven't even gone to church yet, but you're the only one saved, maybe you're the spouse that is the only one that's saved, but your spouse isn't, I want you to know is that you just acknowledge him and he will direct you on how to respond. And your spouse will begin to see your response is different. Yeah. It's it's more with patience. It's more with grace. It's yeah. more with mercy. It's more with forgiveness. And when you start, when he starts to see that, he's like, "What's going on with you?" Like yeah. he'll be inspired and he'll be pulled in, and he'll start seeing your lifestyle and it'll pull him or her up to that and saying, "Okay, etc. etc." Yeah. Et so, I that's that's my life verse to say in a in. I guess, in a small frame of what I've been doing and how I've been bringing Holy Spirit to all spheres, to all decision-making, to all conversations, to all frustrations with my spouse that maybe I've ran into is I bring him up, I have him put my emotions down, and then I respond versus react. And the outcome is way better than my reaction if I didn't do that. That's so good. That's like such a key thing to remember to respond instead of react. I love what you said about, you know, our reaction and and how that, um, you know, there's not time to actually have a real solution. It like reminds me of all the things I know about self-regulation and, and like managing your emotions and whatnot. And that, 
that calm down time is actually a tool from God in order for us to be thinking in our right mind, like in our executive function. That's when God can speak to us. Because when you're like in fight or flight, you're not hearing anything Mm -mm. except the devil. Mm -mm. Like at that point, you're like, you are just like the most susceptible to being used by Satan in that moment, <laughs> you know, because you you are not in your right mind, you know, you literally are in fight or flight. And so being able to even just take a, a breath, think on it, wait a moment, and then you can actually hear God's voice. Just let all the noise, you know, drown out and then you can hear God's voice yeah. and be led by God. I love that. And I love it how you have the scripture to back it up to Proverbs 3, 5. The word that just really stands out to me the most is the word respond because that is uh, that is not something that I think a lot of us do. And I certainly in transparency, like I certainly am not good at that. And most of the time I probably react more than I respond, you know. Uh, hence the reason why we have actual experienced people here on this podcast experience you know? of failure and realizing <laughs> that hey i better figure yeah. out something because it's not working <laughs> but this is such wisdom yeah. you know and and like you're really inspiring me with a lot of just the things that you're saying i love what you said about you know inspiration instead of manipulation and how we try to get what we want but if we if we go the route of inspiration, not only is that not going to hurt our spouse, but it's also going to give them ownership in in their reaction, their own reactions, their own emotions. And then you can actually have the opportunity to collaborate and, and work together. And negotiate. Yeah. Because in marriage, you like it or not, it's a lot of negotiating, mm-hmm. right? Both of you are coming from different backgrounds, different childhood, different upbringing, different views, different perspectives, different way of thinking, and the way you process. I'll give you one good example. He came from a family where he did not go on holidays, vacations at all. I came from a family of holiday vacations anytime we would get. Yeah. You know, we love to, you know, do road trips and all of that. And so I saw the um, the benefits of it. You know, I grew up in so many memories, so much mm-hmm. exploring, adventure and all of that. And I wanted to bring that into our marriage. And here we come and getting married and he didn't know how to handle being away. Yeah. You know, uh, and I could be frustrated. Like, do I have to give up vacations? <laughs> Is this how it's going to be? Because he was just set on his like, what's the point? Right. And that's where I was like, I won't be able to. And again, this is where we want to go manipulate. Oh, you're afraid. Mm -hmm. So we manipulate like, I don't want this. I want us to have vacation. I want to go to Cancun, Cabo. I mean, Mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Um, Um, Yeah. Wherever you want, you want to go on a holiday to the coast or something along those lines. And you want to experience uh, the world together. But this was our upbringing. It was two different ways of thinking. Yeah. So my approach was okay i can either force this change but i know that if i'm going to force this change he's going to be miserable yeah every time we'll be on holiday one day two days three days it's going to be like dragging him he's not going to enjoy him what's the point yeah. right it's just going to burden him and then i will carry that burden yeah that's what manipulation does yeah. Right. You think that you're going to get your way, but really you're just going to carry more of a burden yeah. on the outcome is never good. Yeah. So instead, I slowly worked with him with where he was at. It was a negotiating and I asked for Holy Spirit to help me inspire him. Mm. And I did that. I was very strategic. And I said, Lord, when we go for one or two days to the coast, to the ocean, mm-hmm. Let it be so enjoyable. Speak to him about rest and solitude. Show him how beneficial this is for our relationship and for himself personally. Like I prayed not because I would get it my way, but also for him, for him to see this perspective. And now I went from two days, three days. I didn't give two weeks. I didn't say one week. I just said, let's just go for one day. Yeah. Like a small trip. And we did that. I worked baby steps with him. Now he's he lo- he looks forward to holidays. He's like, I can't wait for the next one with you. Or let's go here. Let's plan this. This wasn't manipulation. This was yeah. inspiration and wisdom with the Lord to show him and inviting God into this 
honestly, it seems so such a ridiculous thing where you're inviting God to help with your vacations, but it's bigger than that. It's, yeah. it's, it's the intimacy. It's the intimacy. It's the, the learning of solitude and rest and mm-hmm. enjoying life together because that's so important. And so that was so many years back. I mean, I'm talking like we're going on 17 years now. Yeah. So that took a couple of situations and experiences and all of that. But Holy Spirit was so faithful to bring great moments and memories to interject this perspective where he's like, wow, this is so beneficial. Yeah. I didn't do that. I was just gave Holy Spirit the opportunity to partner up with me to inspire my husband Mm -hmm. for that change. I didn't force it. Yeah. I inspired it. So good. So that I know it's a small example, but just to give a little bit of an idea of what that could look like. Yeah. That was a huge breakthrough for me. It's a really good example. I mean, because I think a lot of the things that we struggle in in our marriages are usually not big things. No, it's like, true. The things that we have the most disagreements on, I think a lot of married folks can really attest to this. Yeah. It's the small things. It's the sure. things that we're like, this is so stupid. Like, why don't you want to do this? Like, <laughs> this is a small thing. It's important to me. Why is it not important to you? Right. You know, and so it's funny how it's like with the big things, it's so much easier to get on board with your spouse because you're like, we agree. We're never going to get divorced like that. No. Nope. That's like off the table. We agree that like, you know, um, we're going to do this in ministry together. Like those really big things. It's the small, stupid stuff that like will nag at you, thorn in the flesh. Like, oh, yeah. you don't want to go on vacation, uh-huh. you know? Yes. And I, so I think it's actually just such a perfect example because so many Amen. people, a lot of the fights, a lot of the disagreements, arguments, they stem from usually the root, <clears throat> the it's actually really small, but the root of it comes from something that from the past, yes. you know, from your own childhood or something like that. And so it can manifest in something simple. Yeah. But it's those simple things that actually make the most difference. That's daily life. You know, that's not the big stuff. Like when me and Rickard went through our big challenge where, you know, he had to go back to Sweden. I was here in America three years apart, immigration battle, all that stuff. That was not the most challenging part for us. Like there, I mean, we, I could go on this. This is not the time for that. But like it was the little things. It was yeah. the small things in between you know because on the big thing we agreed we had faith for that we were standing in agreement for that we were fighting together for that our challenge was in the little pebbles in between that were just like little gravel pieces just getting stuck in your shoe and you're like man i really i have to walk a thousand miles now with the rock in my shoe (laughs) you know and that's exactly what those are it gets so annoying and eventually you're like now i have a blister (laughs) now this hurts now i can't stand it it's turning into an infection you know now it's annoying now it's frustrating now i have to stop my journey because i'm literally in so much pain over something that was started out as just a small pebble so you true. know and so it's just true. addressing it from the beginning and taking it out and removing it and how much more pleasant the journey is and, and you said it addressing it yeah. and you know this is the part where communication comes where he saw that this was necessary for me like again it wasn't like i had to have this it was a huge desire mm-hmm. and he wanted to give uh, please me in this way and i wanted to please him how do we meet those those needs, right? Yeah. Those desires. And it's a tool where, you know, I tried first, like, please, 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 and pleading. And it didn't really go anywhere because even though he came, it wasn't pleasant for him. Yeah. And I wanted him to enjoy the experience. And I know that, you know, we sometimes think that we can change our spouse. Mm. <laughs> you can inspire, mm-hmm. but only the true weapon, the true secret is Holy Spirit. And so, you know, we we need to stop taking the responsibility of what God can do and give him back his place yeah. and let him do it. And honestly, we are just, we stopped inviting him. We stopped inviting him to do that. And we take that burden on ourselves yeah. and say, I want this change because it's better. I see this better. Sure, you may, but he can do it better than you can. So true. So let him. And yeah. 
And that's the invitation. Invite him. He can do a better job on inspiring his spouse through you, but let him do the heart change, the yeah. heart posture. Come on, that's so good. You know, we've talked about so many amazing things you've shared just like absolute wisdom here. I literally have so many more questions I want to ask you because you're you're just like on fire right now. But uh, this is a really great place for us to wrap things up. You know, you brought up some really amazing key points in in our conversation today about, you know, are you a quarreling wife? Are you a promiscuous wife? Or are you like the Proverbs 31 woman? How do you find your place uh, with God in your marriage to combat being lonely or feeling neglected, you know, then how to be able to respond instead of react to situations, you know, to have more peace within your marriage, how to inspire your spouse as opposed to manipulating your spouse into getting your way, you know, and really practicing those fruits of the spirit. And when you allow the Holy Spirit into your marriage and to truly guide your everyday decision, you then how now have the capabilities of doing the harder thing, like inspiring instead of manipulating, like responding instead of reacting, like being the Proverbs 31 woman and seeking God instead of being, you know, uh, re reactionary or promiscuous. So I I want to thank you for your wisdom and all of your experience and for sharing that with our our audience uh, who will be watching this, you know, soon when it comes out or years down the road. I know that this is going to bless so many people. So thank you so much for thank being for here. We're me. definitely going to have to have you again because mm -hmm. I know there's so much more to just glean from you and be able to share with people. Um, I know I'm personally taking away so many things from this conversation um and i'm blessed that you're one of my best friends so <laughs> i have access to you come on <laughs> um that being said if you love what you heard today and you want more opportunities to get this kind of wisdom whether it's in your marriage or if you're a woman and you need more insights on how to walk with Christ, I highly encourage you to please subscribe to Mariana's YouTube Insights with Mariana. You're going to be so blessed. She gives so much more insight. Like if you love what you heard today, you're going to get that times 100 on her YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you give her a, a like and follow. Make sure you give her husband, Ilya Paratuk, a like and follow on his YouTube channel. We'll have everything linked in the description of our YouTube channel of how you can get connected with their ministry. If you're in the state of Washington and uh, you want to get connected with their ministry and what they're doing out in Everett, Washington, you can get more information from our website um, at hungrygeneration.com. We'll also link all of that into the chat too um, so that you'll be able to connect. Um, and it's just such a blessing. Like We're just so grateful to have you. Uh, be on the lookout for Mariana's book. Yes. It's going to come out hopefully sometime this year. Um, and we can post that as soon as um, we'll be sharing that on all of our social media as soon as she does. Because, wow, I mean, if this is just one drop in the bucket of what the book is going to be like, I'm certain that the rest is going to be incredibly transformational. So once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having Joining me. us on One Flesh Podcast. We hope that you join us again on our next episode in a month from now. We'll have more guests like Mariana. We'll be bringing her back because clearly there's so much more to learn. Um, and we hope that you guys are blessed by this. Please give us a like and follow. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to donate to this ministry on, on One Flesh Podcast with the Deliverance Podcast, you can do so. We'll have all of those links in our description. If you want to donate into uh, Mariana's uh, ministry, we'll link all of her uh, ministry links in the subscription as well. Um, and you can do that so we can keep sharing more amazing content like this. Well, we hope that you guys were blessed and we hope you join us again next time.